Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Talk This Way podcast. I'm your host, Matt Bishop. And uh, hanging out with us today is Adam Jaffe from Pistols at Dawn. What's going on, brother? What's up, my brother? Thanks so much for having (laughs) us today. I'm so grateful. The band is grateful. Oh, pleasure is all mine, for sure. Um, You guys uh, have a lot going on right now. Um, We got some cool tour stuff coming up. Uh, some alter bridge dates, but uh, you guys are getting ready for something in the next 24 hours. What's going down? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fortunately a big week for us. We just got noticed this uh, yesterday afternoon that we hit Billboard Top 40 with our second consecutive single from Ascension uh, under the surface. Yes, yeah, that was a, a big moment for us. I mean, when you hear Billboard Top 40 uh, on the rock charts, it just makes us melt. And as a musician and you know, clearly we, we we feel like we've done something right. So we're just feeling really blessed today. And um, uh, tomorrow, the entire band flies out to Vegas. We are playing the uh, Hashtag Happens media-based radio conference. Uh, and we are playing Thursday night with the amazing Daughtry and Saliva. And uh, we're just uh, completely stoked to do that. It's going to be a killer private show. And then a week later, uh, we finish up rehearsals and we head out for a, a three-week, uh, 12-show run out west with uh, Alter Bridge and Mammoth uh, WVH. And then shortly after that, we go out on a 29-show run coast-to-coast with uh, Ugly Kid Joe and um, Fozzie. And, you know, our dreams are coming true, man. That's all I can tell you. It's a good week. Yeah, man. It, that's... Ugh. I don't know how, you know, you kind of sit and process all that. You know, you got the Ultra Bridge run, and then right after that is, you know, Fozzie are a, a bunch of heavy hitters for a while now, and obviously Ugly Kid Joe, just, you know, legendary. Yeah. Um, you know, th- how do you guys kind of uh, get ready for, you know, a, a back-to-back run like this, you know, mentally? You know, we just, we love playing music. I mean, we're, we're one of those like true rock bands that we don't use tracks. We just plug in. Our harmonies are real. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll do respect to people who use them, but I'm just saying like we love to play. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's not really a burden for us or we're not really stressed about the touring or anything. It's more just like we just want to go connect with people and play with this in front of as many people in as many places as possible. So to be completely honest, everybody on my team are, are just so excited and rehearsals the energy we're juiced up uh we're kind of bored rehearsing right now it's kind of like (laughs) you get you get to that point in rehearsals where Mm -hmm. you're ready for tour and we just need to go do it and so we've got one last rehearsal today before we head to vegas for tomorrow and um you know we're ready for the altar bridge tour we're ready for it all is it like i remember you know like back in school you know teachers you know your parents they would be like stop you know you study too much like don't get me wrong you got to study but if you just keep like pounding your brain you're actually gonna like you know mess stuff up you're gonna like forget stuff and not saying that you guys would ever like forget a song or something but is this you get to a point where it's just like listen we we got this like we just got to sit back and chill now it's gonna it's just gonna happen when we get on stage yeah yeah you 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 hit the nail on the head with that i mean you know you can over prepare and mm-hmm. so it's the type of thing where we arranged our set for these shows, these tours. We rehearsed like crazy and we rehearse because we enjoy playing. We don't rehearse because it's work. And, uh, you know, we got to we get to a point where you can start overthinking it. And it's just like it's just like, eh, let's go. You know, let's just go throw it down. Put us in a room, throw a bunch of people in there. Industry, you know, regular people. We're just we just want to play. Now, I know this kind of this is going to seem like weird to probably think about because we're still, you know, so fresh. You know, the new album just came out this past August, so we're not even at a year yet. But a lot of people like to write on the road and you guys are going to have a lot of free time coming up. And even with technology nowadays, you know, I've heard of people, you know, laying some stuff down, you know, at a tour stop. Are you guys even thinking that far ahead yet or are we still just so focused on you know getting this album more out there riding the wave of this billboard hit and just you know staying focused in the now so that's a great question and what i would say is both i would say that we're definitely present we definitely want to 
milk ascension the album ascension as much as possible uh to be completely honest with you you know we put out two singles to radio they both hit top 40 billboard uh you know under the surface is still at the beginning and it hit top 40 and Mm -hmm. so we hope we hope it will rise super high over the next you know four four to five months or so and then honestly um once we go as far as we can with under the surface tour as much as possible we've got two more tracks uh going to radio uh minimum nice. from the ascension album so we're gonna use this year really really um focus on ascension tour as much as possible on it put a bunch of tracks out at radio get them as high as possible i mean i can't tell you how much work went into ascension it's the type of thing where you put a gazillion hours into writing it recording it producing it editing it the whole the whole magilla publicizing it mm-hmm. it's a beast so I know people are just like, yeah, let's go to the next album. But it's the type of thing where, you know, we, we, we wrote Ascension a year before it came out. So it's just like we're two year, we're a year and a half later now, and we're just getting to enjoy what we did two years ago. <laughs> and, yeah. so, and so, we, you know, we really want to milk that. But here's what I will say. We've already started writing the new album. Uh, we're always, you know, because we rehearse so much, you can do overkill. So we get to a mm-hmm. point where we're just like, ah, we got the, we got the, we got the set ready. Let's play the new stuff. And, and my guys, Devin, Sean, and, um, and Will, the guitarists and bassist, uh, they're putting together stuff all the time. And we, we put pen to paper and we started the new ideas already. We've got one song pretty much in the bag and we've got a second song, which is three quarters there. And so the album is writing itself. And what I would say is while we're on the road on these tours, they're going to have the acoustics nonstop and they'll be riding nonstop. So, wow. so the Very goal cool. is, is once we've toured as much as possible, and once we put out as many singles from Ascension as possible for minimum, uh, you know, the new album will be ready. So our mm-hmm. goal is to have the new album ready at the beginning of 24. So we don't have the crazy long delays for production or publicity or all the other stuff you have mm-hmm. to do to get it out. We want to just drop it. It's going to be one of those where we finish Ascension, boom, here's the new album. Let's go. Yeah, I feel like, you know, when you said, like, we just want to take our time, you know, we want to, like, really get every, squeeze every last drop, you know, out of this record. And I feel like it today in age, like, I remember when I was, like, growing up, like, middle school, a tour would announce and you bought a concert ticket for something that was, like, a year away. And now yeah. stuff gets like, you know, Pistols at Dawn tour, uh, tickets go on sale tomorrow and the tour starts next week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's quick oh, things. my God. And the same thing with releasing music. Like we talked about, like technology. You guys could just say, is this song ready? Should we just cut? Should we do it now on the bus? Sure. Yeah. Let's just put it on Spotify. Boom. And it's out there. And there's really, you know, not that people are not doing it anymore, but the whole album cycle thing is kind of. You could do it or you don't have to. But, you know, in your case, like if there's momentum, let's do the album cycle. Let's like do this, you know, kind of the old fashioned way, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, um, if you're going to do a full album, you you want to push the album as much as possible. But we've learned how long it takes, you know, when you're at this level, this this fortunately we're at a great level. And when you're at this level, there's so many things that have to be done before an album can be released. Mm-hmm. And so we've learned that we've learned that the hard way because it's kind of like you finish and you're like, let's go, let's get it to the people. And they're like, OK, we'll have it out in six months. And we're just yeah. like, mm-hmm. hell no. And so <laughs> we're going to finish the album this year. We're going to make sure it's ready to go at the beginning of 24 and we're going to drop it. It's going to be one of those like you just said, we're going to drop it in get all the industry crap done in five minutes. Nice. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, with, uh, you know, with rehearsing, right? Like there's, it comes to a point where it's like overkill. And I think that it's the same thing for, you know, for the fans, like you want to be out there as much as possible, uh, especially bands that are, you know, trying to grow, but you don't want to oversaturate yourselves. Like if you're just always, Oh, mini tour here, mini tour there, single, single, single people are like, all right, well, that's cool, but it's not, it loses its luster like a little bit. So I think, yeah, like pushing an album, you know, for all it's worth. And then, you know, like 2024, you know, people are going to be hungry, man. They're going to be ready for it. And not that they wouldn't be if you dropped like those, those 
two, three tracks that are ready right now. Um, it just adds to it. You know, it's like that when that tool album took like 13 years, I'm not saying totally. take 13, let's no. find a happy medium. <laughs> yes. Agreed. And you know, we, we, we don't want to oversaturate and we want to give them a cool experience for every show they come to. So our kind of our goal is, you know, right now we need to go, we need to go open for as many great bands as we can. And we have certain sets and we'll change the sets periodically to give people, you know, as we come back to venues and as we come back to cities, we're not going to play the same set over and over. That doesn't make any sense. We want to give them a new experience. And one of the coolest things we do actually, which we think we do is uh, when we play headlining sets and eventually, you know, we'd hope by the end of this year, maybe we'll have the good fortune of a headlining tour. You know, when that happens, that's when they really get the goods. You know, there's only so mm -hmm. much we can do in 30 minutes opening right. for somebody. But but we've got some bells and whistles thrown into our uh, our Alter Bridge sets and our Ugly Kid Joe sets and even our show, show set for tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night in Vegas. We've got some stuff that people are never going to see coming. And that's the nice. thing is we always want to keep it interesting. And I think what we'll do is we come back to different cities if it's just opening or if we come back to headline is we really will try to throw in bells and whistles and songs that they just didn't see coming. And, and, uh, cause we really do want it to be a unique experience every time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's no reason, you know, whether it's like you said, whether it's like a 50 minute headlining set or, you know, just a quick, quick hitter to kick off the show. There's no reason you can't make the most of it and, and, you know, really hit them with some cool stuff. Yeah. What about, uh, looking ahead to, you know, the summer and fall, or are we looking at potentially any festival dates? Are we looking at maybe getting over overseas or anything? Yeah. So the ugly kid Joe tour will go from the beginning of May to mid June. Uh, from there, our management and our booking agent, they're working on, they're working, they're talking about some sort of headlining tour at some point with some of the big national up and coming bands. Uh, they're talking about that now. Uh, we're pushing Europe like crazy. We need to go to Europe. We need to go to South America. We need to go to Japan. Um, but Europe, Europe, Europe and the UK like our style of music. And so we need to be there. And we, we marketed there and publicized there and did a lot there uh, when we first came out and even at the beginning of this record. Um, but it's the type of thing where you got to go over there and play. And so we're kind of sticking stokes in the fire you know sticks in the fire everywhere we can for bands to know that we're ready to go with them anytime they want to go and um you know that goes along with festivals too our radio people especially all the different radio festivals and whatnot they're all being planned now mm -hmm. um you know i think as you hear some more of them come out hopefully we'll be on them and they're still talking about us for some of the wimmer festivals potentially opening and stuff nice it's, it's you know be, be, you know booking and stuff <laughs> it's its own beast and yeah we have to leave we have to leave it to our booking agent and it's also one of those things it's kind of like in the music industry as my guitarist always puts it he's like ready set wait you know and, and it's the type of thing where despite our crazy moment right now we still have to let other people do their jobs they don't work as fast as we want them to always and you have to be somewhat patient. And so mm -hmm. I drive people crazy. Uh, I do a lot of the, the, the band management stuff. And I drive our manager. I manage our manager. I drive him crazy every day. <laughs> I, drive, I, drive our, I update our booking agent every day with all the new stats. And so I think, I think the key, though, is that once we really get out on the road in the next few weeks um, and we're playing in front of thousands of people every night, uh, they're just not going to have a choice. They're going to have to book us a shit ton more, Europe and everywhere in the festivals, and whether they like it or not. So it's, it's, more is coming. That's awesome, man. And yeah, I I'm excited for you guys to get over to Europe as well. The culture there just really hasn't changed since like the 70s and 80s. It is still very much a, a rock and metal uh, territory. And, yes. you know, you got, uh, you know, like here we have Coachella and it's just kind of, you know, like pop alternative, you know, but, you know, their Coachella over there, Glastonbury, like they're talking about maybe like Guns N' Roses headlining this year, like a hard yeah. rock band. Like that's yeah. their pop music over there still, um, along with, you know, everything else, of course. But yeah, it's just it hit rock hits different over there still, man. And yeah, for you guys to get over there and, you know, headline some bigger rooms, 
Uh, that'll just be so killer. I'm excited for that for you guys for sure. Yes, 100%. Top priority. Going to happen. Well, dude, thank you so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, Pistols at Dawn, ladies and gentlemen. Ascension is out now. And uh, call your local radio stations. Request that single. We got to get that some more airplay. Let's get that climbing up the top 40 charts. And you can catch them on the road this spring and summer with Alter Bridge and Ugly Kid Joe. We got a ticket link right down there at the bottom for you. Hey, we, we, we're just beyond thankful uh, to you for having us today. Please let us know anytime you want us to come back. Uh, we're there. It's such an honor and uh, to be with your listeners. And, um, you know, they can follow us on uh, Pistols at Dawn Band, at Pistols at Dawn Band on Facebook, Pistols at Dawn uh, Official on Instagram, Pistols at Dawn Band is our website. And um, just know that we love to engage. We're real guys. We like to talk. We, we, you know, we want to meet people on the road. Come see our shows and say hello. You know, don't be afraid to comment to us. We're going to comment back. Uh, it's how, kind of how we spent the pandemic, just engaging with as many people as possible. Now we're going on tour after tour. And honestly, it's just because we want to connect with people, meet people and be with people. So uh, thank you again. Yeah, man. Will you guys be at the merch booth after some shows, signing some stuff, uh, maybe? 100%. 100%. Very cool. Look there out, you go, please. everybody. Catch him at the merch booth after that. Grab some signed CDs, get some pictures. That'll be cool. Yeah, man. Thank you again.